This week, I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana, home of Ellen, Harry Cotter Jr., and vampires. Loud, proud, and full of flavor. I love this city, and I think it loves me back. What's up? Good to see you. It's a city defined by water, for better and for worse. New Orleans, I'm here to catch your fish, but I know it's not going to be the big easy. Oh, big one, big one! Big! I can't wait to cast my line into this unique urban gumbo. You never know what you might catch. It's a dinosaur! I'm Mike Iaconelli. My friends and I grew up fishing the mean streams and rivers of Philadelphia. The Bass Master Classic Champion, Mike Iaconelli! Now I'm a professional angler. You got him! With a screaming passion <laughs> for city fishing. All it takes is a little skill and a local let's go, let's go. to show you where the fish are biting. Welcome to New Orleans. The Big Easy, famous for its food, music, art, and unique residents. A cultural melting pot that's over 300 years old. Cajuns, Creole, French, African Americans, Native Americans, they've all added to the unique flavor of the city. Everyone loves to eat, drink, and party. And water makes it all possible. New Orleans is super connected to its waterways through commerce, through fishing, and through flooding. The city is built on a thin crescent of land sandwiched between Lake Pontchartrain and the legendary Mississippi River. That's why it was originally known as Crescent City. And not far from here, the Mississippi River dumps into the Gulf. This place is loaded with fish, and I can't wait to get my hands on them. But before I go fishing, first things first, I gotta run in here and try some absinthe. New Orleans is full of traditions, and this potent green spirit is a classic sign of the city's French heritage. This bar has been serving absinthe to pirates, generals, and famous writers since 1806. What are you in town for? I am here this week to catch three different fish. The alligator gar, the speckled trout, and the bull red. Do you know any of those fish? No, absolutely not. But you do know your absinthe. I do. Which one should I get? Well, uh, do you want to fish sober or do you want to fish drunk? Um, yeah. Yeah? yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, then I would recommend the Nouvelle Orleans. The Nouvelle's going to have the most wormwood, so you're going to get more of that, like, stimulant effect. Look, I'm a fisherman. Anything with worms in it, I like. Wormwood is a standard ingredient in absinthe, but there's no actual worms in it. It's a plant. I'm hoping it will bring me some local New Orleans luck. Here you go. OK. That's good. To New Orleans and the fish of New Orleans. Cheers. Well, I don't know if my luck has improved, but I definitely feel like I'm back in the swing of New Orleans now. This city is super special to me. This is the place where I won the 2003 Bassmaster Classic. <laughs> Never give up! Never give up! This is the city where I got my start in professional fishing. So before I start looking for my three bucket list fish, I'm going to reintroduce myself to the bass of New Orleans. And the best part is, I don't even need to leave the city to do it. Let me let you in on a little secret. In the heart of New Orleans, there's a place called City Park. It's 11 miles of lakes and lagoons. And this, to me, epitomizes urban fishing. Grab your rods, grab a backpack, and just go fishing. City Park is a treasure in the heart of New Orleans. 1,300 acres of waterways, grand old trees, and fun for young and old. You know, the cool thing about these city lakes, you don't need a boat, you don't need a guide. You can do it all yourself. OK, one! There you have it. 
a giant! Giant! Okay, so it's just a baby. But I have a strong connection with these New Orleans bass. It's great to meet them again. And there we have City Park Bass, New Orleans. We're gonna let this fish go. He's gonna swim away and hopefully grow to be Big Mama. Look at this. I'm on a whole school of fish here. This is unbelievable. Wait a minute. That's the same fish. <laughs> It's not the same fish. Number two, and they're getting bigger. OK, enough goofing around. I got to get on with my bucket list. But it's so much fun here. Maybe one more cast. Oh, big one, big one! Oh! Ah! Ah! Yeah! Look at that. Great example of urban fishing. This is a largemouth bass. Look at a mouth on that thing. And they're eating little tiny bait fish, little minnows. I made a switch to a bait. Look at this. That looks just like a little minnow. Made that change, caught that fish instantly. Wherever you're fishing, but especially in urban lakes, mimic the forage, and you're going to catch bass even on your lunch break. Damn, I'm good. Mwah. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. What an awesome way to start my New Orleans fishing trip. But now it's time for some serious bucket list fishing. And first up, I'm going after a prehistoric monster that lives right in the middle of New Orleans. The alligator gar. Taxi! This thing is a living dinosaur. I can't wait to get my first bite and set the hook on this thing. My first fishing spot is one of New Orleans' many canals. This one is on 17th Street. A huge network of canals has been dug around the city over the last 300 years. And fishing in one is a classic New Orleans experience. I'm hooking up with the guy in New Orleans that is the guy for Alligator Gar, Mark Hood. You came to the right place. We have plenty of gar. You brought some rods? I have rods, but I think I feel like I'm undermatched for these fish. I've got bass rods, which might be a little light. You want to break one? I think I'll take Mark's advice and use one of his rods. Since gar can be more than eight feet long and weigh over 300 pounds. An awesome predator with a mouth full of razor sharp teeth and scales so tough that Native Americans use them as arrowheads. Hooking and landing one is going to be tough. That's much better. That's awesome. That's I'm just going to let it sit. You know, the one thing that's interesting is in a lot of forms of fishing, an early start is key. Early in the morning, low light. But here it's different, right? You want a later start. With gar, I want to wait for the water to warm up because that's what's going to make gar active. They're a warm water fish. Actually, they're a hot water fish. Yep. Alligator gar live in the warm waters of southeastern USA, in lakes, swamps, and rivers, and hopefully the canals of New Orleans. Because much of the city is below sea level, any water that enters New Orleans has to be pumped out again. Our fishing spot is part of a series of flood control canals that have been dug out right through the city. And they use this pump structure to prevent flooding in the city. Yeah, city's not going to drain itself. Right. So we got to use a series of pumping stations to drain it. But this flood control system doesn't always work. In 2005, New Orleans was hit by Hurricane Katrina. And 80% of the city ended up underwater. The Big Easy's canals and pumping stations were overwhelmed and part of the 17th Street Canal's levee collapsed, flooding several nearby neighborhoods. The walls have been rebuilt and pumping stations strengthened. Now it's a prime spot to catch an alligator gar. That float went down. Did it? Ah! There you go. Ah! Somebody's eating it. What is that? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at it. Look, 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 look. He's biting it. He's staying in one spot, though. Look, 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 look. There you go. He's on. He's on there. He's on there. Oh, it's a turtle! <laughs> that was a turtle! <laughs> it was a effing turtle! <laughs> Thank goodness that's not happening to me today. Oh, uh, Got him! Got him! Got him! Got him! Look at that. Another turtle. Good luck with that. This is a good way to sum up our day so far. About four hours in, three turtles to show. It's not the alligator gar, but it's keeping us busy. It's turning into a scorching day. The water should be warming up and getting those ancient giant fish active. It's having the opposite effect on me. I'm just about dozing off on the bank of the canal. Luckily, we set an alarm. Uh -oh. Oh. Got, got a bite. bite. Got a bite. Got a bite. I'm in New Orleans fishing for a giant prehistoric beast called an alligator gar. This city's known as the Big Easy, but there's nothing easy about catching this fish. See him running? Just yeah, let I him do, see, I do. What he, see if he runs yeah, the float down. Out. floats down. So he's still got it. That floats down. Yeah. But we're waiting. You're going to be my you're going to be my count guy. You tell me when. I'm going to be your running for the net guy. When they grab a bait, Gar will swim off with it before they actually swallow it. If I try to hook it too early, I'll just pull the bait out of its mouth or snap the line on its teeth. And if I wait too long, it might spit it out. So this is the weirdest thing I've ever done. In fishing, normally you get a bite, you set the hook. You get a bite, you set the hook. Here, because these fish have uh, teeth, a long snout, we're letting this fish eat the bait. He's got it right now. That floats under. Now, this is a waiting game. Don't want to wait too long or right. you lose interest. Right. It's, it, it's a happy medium about when to wait and when to set the hook. Yeah, go ahead, jack him up. Jack him? Yeah, he's got it. No go. You jacked him. You jacked it right up out of his mouth. Look at that. Got to jack too hard? Ike the gar feeder. I got to be honest with you, it's been tough. I got a great idea. Orleans is full of canals. Yeah. So let's go see if we can find better conditions on a different canal. Let's go to Orleans Canal. Let's do it. The Orleans Avenue Canal is another part of the New Orleans flood protection system that lets water drain out of the city and into Lake Pontchartrain. Barely hear yourself think under here. What? Yeah, you're right. What? We're like underneath the freeway here. We're like trolls. Trolls fishing for gar. This is slow fishing. A reality of how we're fishing for gar is you gotta be patient. You have to wait them out. And the weird thing about fishing in an artificial human control waterway is that conditions can change with a push of a button. Whoa, whoa! What just happened? Oh, they're okay. turning it on! Look! <laughs> Believe it or not, that could improve our odds. The pipe just kicked on over here. Looks like they're emitting a little bit of flow. You can see the white bubbles coming out of that hole. That might be good. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited. I was falling asleep about an hour ago. All of a sudden, I'm excited now. It feels like everything is coming together. Sun, warm water, and now some bubbles and extra current to attract curious gar. He's got it, he's got it, he's got it. Oh, got it. Oh, he's taking it. My float's gone. My float's completely gone. This is the one right here, man. I'm not setting the hook too early on this one. Dropped it. Dropped it. Dropped it? Dropped it. Oh, he's got it again. He's got it again. He, he's eating it, spitting it. Eating it, spitting it. Got him! There you go. Got him! Got him. Big one, big one. Big one. 
Please, please, please get him in the net. Play him over to me. That took a long time. Finally happened. Now, not a giant, but a good one. Look at that thing. Look at the teeth on that beast. Man, you want to know why people think they look like dinosaurs? Look at that. Look at the mouth on that thing. Dude, look at the teeth. Look at the teeth on that thing. Look at them. The front ones are like an inch long. Alligator gar have a torpedo-shaped body with small fins set far back toward the tail. That broad snout is filled with two rows of teeth, long and pointed, to pierce and hold their prey. Their tough, overlapping scales are like a suit of armor. And they can even breathe air directly if the water is low in oxygen. No wonder they've been able to survive so long. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're Thank right. you, New Orleans. Woo! It took a while, but I did it. My first ever alligator gar. Tick that one off the bucket list. Beautiful. Thank you. Look at this. Watch this. All right, guys. Nice. One down, two to go. Who that say they gonna catch them fish? Day two of my New Orleans fishing mission. Next on the hit list is the famous speckled trout. A speckled trout is kind of an iconic fish to New Orleans. When I think about this city, when I think about Lake Pontchartrain, I think about giant speckled trout. Speckled trout, or specks, are awesome looking fish with a bright yellow mouth and giant fangs. They're a favorite sport fish all around the Gulf of Mexico, but New Orleans is famous for its specks. My journey to catch one starts on one of New Orleans' iconic streetcars. They've been going since 1835, and this one, the St. Charles Line, is the oldest continually operating street railway in the entire world. We're gonna be fishing Lake Pontchartrain, but it's not gonna be easy. Cold this morning, a lot of wind, and on top of that, a bunch of fresh water is coming in from the Mississippi River. It's mixing with the salt. It's gonna make fishing tough. Just a week ago, an unusual event happened. Heavy rain meant a flood control spillway was opened to divert some of the Mississippi's flow away from New Orleans and into Lake Pontchartrain. Speckled trout prefer salty water, so that huge burst of fresh water could have driven some of them away from their usual haunts. Luckily for me, my guide today is a local legend. Captain Dudley Vandeboer has been fishing these waters for 53 years. No wonder they call him the king of Lake Pontchartrain. Now, Mike, what got you into fishing? My mom, my uncle, my grandfather started me fishing for um, freshwater trout, rainbow trout, rainbow when trout. I was a kid. That's what got me hooked. It's crazy, man. Yeah. And now, all these years later, here I am fishing for speckled trout in New Orleans. <laughs> Captain Dudley knows all about the spillway opening and releasing that burst of fresh water. So he suggests we start fishing close to home. Now, Captain Dudley, we're going to start in the marina. Why are these speckled trout, why are they in the marina? Why are they using it? We, we're getting a, that, that surge of fresh water coming across because of the spillway, and they're trying to get out of it. They're trying to look for, you know, the highest salinity they can find. And these canals will trap some of that salinity for a while. And then gotcha. all of a sudden, it, it, they'll take over even in the canals there. Yeah. Great place to start. It's calm in here. It's protected. We've got a big highway going past. You can hear the cars. But this is the kind of area where we catch a speckled trout. There he is. Look at that. Uh, oh, we got off. Oh, god. You started to move that thing a that little bit. That was a bit. good one, yeah. Wow. That's a good sign. <laughs> it's a pretty good fish. We right? hadn't been here five minutes. I'm ready to get a bite. <laughs> I mean, until you get a bite, you feel like you have no idea what you're doing whatsoever. I'm starting to think we're too late, and that freshwater surge has already arrived in the canals. You know, we're going to make one more pass to this area. We've had one little bite. Uh, 
Captain said it's not really happening here, but on the way out, I'm gonna switch up. I'm gonna go to a rattling bait. Like most fish, speckled trout have got ears and can hear well. I'm hoping a change of lure might take advantage of this. It's a hard lure, imitates a bait fish, makes a lot of sound. And because this is a real flat area, there's not much contour or structure or cover, I'm gonna throw this around just to try it on the way out. The king of the lake has decided it's time to enter his domain, Lake Pontchartrain. Even though that fresh water has already been flowing in, it's a big lake, and Captain Dudley has a favorite spot he thinks might still be working. Lake Pontchartrain forms the northern boundary of New Orleans. It covers 630 square miles with an average depth of 10 to 16 feet. Except it's not actually a lake. Pontchartrain is connected to the Gulf of Mexico, so that means it's technically a tidal lagoon. We made a move, we moved to a set of pilings, and we're on a, a bridge. We're fishing an old bridge here that's not active, but right behind us is the main thoroughfare to get into New Orleans. The I-10 Interstate Bridge was built in 1965 to connect New Orleans with the far shore of Lake Pontchartrain. But when a huge storm surge blasted into the lake from Hurricane Katrina in 2005, it got trashed. Now a new bridge has been built right next to it. And Captain Dudley steers us under the remains of the old one to a secret trout spot. This is a great spot to catch a speckled trout. These pilings provide shade. They provide a break for the current coming in and out. And they attract a lot of bait fish. The one negative right now is the wind. We've got a heavy wind blowing with the tide going the opposite way. And that's stacking up the waves. It's making it really hard to fish and really hard to feel the lure. Hey! That was a good bite. Another bite. That's it, that one too. This is looking promising. Something down there is taking lots of little bites at my lure. Then, the king of the lake shows me how it's done. That's a good fight, though. Yeah, he's a nice fish. It's not a speckled trout, but Captain Dudley is yeah, giving me a fishing lesson on his home lake. Ah, come here, fish. And unlike me, he's not going to catch and release. That's dinner taken care of. Man, I'm starting to think my New Orleans luck has run out. Tough, windy conditions, unusual things happening with the flood control system. And on top of that, I'm not feeling so great. My throat's killing me. I feel like I got a head cold. I might have a fever. It's hard to concentrate. But you know what the best cure for a sick fisherman is? Catching a fish. I get... Yeah. I'm fishing on New Orleans' famous Lake Pontchartrain for the elusive speckled trout. Yeah. And this could finally be it. Big one, big one. Ah! 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 Got him. Look at how he ate that bait. Oh my, sideways in his mouth. Look at that thing. Man, one of the things out here, deal with extremely dirty water. We talked about it earlier. These fish, they have an ear. And listen to this. Listen. That thing found that. Speckled trout have streamlined bodies with distinctive spots on their backs and top fins. They have a bright yellow lining around their mouth and two huge canine teeth on their upper jaw to pierce and hold their prey. Look at it, looks like a vampire. Man, that's a beautiful fish. Look at the color on that thing. Look at the spots, the speckles down its back. Captain, I know you're going to hate me for this, but I'm going to let this thing go to swim away and somebody else to catch another There day. you go. We'll catch you. Here you go. There she goes. Fish number two ticked off the bucket list. That was hard work, but I caught a beautiful speck in the end. Captain Dudley, I can't thank you enough, man. Uh, it's always fun to fish with guys like you and all, and uh, it was a pleasure. But I'm not ready to say goodbye to the King of Lake Pontchartrain just yet. 
Captain Dudley said he's got a surprise to show me back at his home arena. When we get back to the house, we'll see if we can catch a gar for you. You've got gar there? Got gar. You're kidding me. No, nah, they, they, uh, I call them my friends. Big ones, or? I got some pretty nice ones. Huh. I've already ticked this amazing fish off my bucket list, but I only caught a small one. I'm going to take this opportunity to see how big they can get with my own eyes. There is quite possibly a chance at a 7 to 10 footer, something that weighs over 100 pounds. Do you mind if I take a couple casts? Go one? ahead. Give me a good try. You sure? Go ahead. OK. They're used to being fed fish scraps by Captain Dudley and his neighbors, so it doesn't take long to hook up one of these giants. Wow. Well, we're going to need a bigger net. <laughs> ah, God. Ah. <laughs> Man, unbelievable. Out here, and we've captured an alligator gar. This fish goes well over 100 pounds. Don't you think? Close to it. 80 yeah, to 100 yeah, pounds. That's solid he is. Unbelievable creature. Prehistoric looking. It's great to see people looking after these amazing fish. In the past, alligator gar were considered a pest and often killed on site. They were wiped out in many areas, but luckily, attitudes have changed. They're now appreciated as a top freshwater predator and ancient survivor. This thing is a fish eater. Eats anything it comes in contact with. And when you're this big, you can eat anything that swims in the water. Just wanted to show you how big and massive these things can actually get. We're going to let this thing go back, and somebody else can catch it again. Whew. All right, thank you. Oh. <laughs> I need a break. That was heavy. No more alligator guard. <laughs> Whenever I'm back in New Orleans, I love to hang out by the mighty river that it's built around, the Mississippi, and share the joy of city fishing. Here, you take this. Take a couple casts. The Big Easy was built and fought over by many nations because of its strategic position near the mouth of the river. Whoever controlled New Orleans controlled access to the Mississippi. And I should be more careful about controlling access to my fishing rod. What the happened down there? I'll give you $5 if you can get it out without breaking it off. I'll give you $5 if you can. <laughs> you give me $5 if I can get it out? Yeah. All right, $5 if I can get this out. $5. OK, are you ready for this one? Hold on. Oh, God! Oh, God! You owe me five for Oh, ah, God! <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> Look at his bird's nest. And this guy told me he could fish. Never let standby passengers fish your equipment. Well, I lost my favorite fishing lure, but them's the breaks. I'm going to take a break from my bucket list and do some Mississippi fishing just for fun. We're going to be doing a little sunset cat fishing. I just had to do it. What's a trip to New Orleans and the Mississippi River? without catching a giant cat. There are actually three different kinds of catfish in the Mississippi. Flathead, blue, and channel. There are reports of blue catfish weighing over 350 pounds. Mark Twain made Mississippi catfishing famous in his novel, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. I'm meeting another Mark to take me in search of a Mississippi cat. Hey. How you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Been waiting for you. My gar fishing guide, Mark Hood, knows a lot about catching catfish, too. He's taking me to a famous spot by the Mississippi the locals call the end of the world. You ready? I'm ready. There's one track. I'm ready. There we go. Keep There's going, two Mark. tracks. Hey. There we go. Keep going. I got it. Good I man, got, good man. I got to rest. I got to rest on my back. Woo. That was the easy part. Oh, okay. you going? Let's keep going. All right. It's been a tough trip, and I'm still recovering from being sick. Mark is working me hard. Whoa. 
Wow, this place really does feel like the end of the world. It's definitely the end of a canal, and we're right where New Orleans Industrial Canal meets the mighty Mississippi. This five and a half mile long canal was built for cargo ships, not flood control. It's 30 feet deep, big enough for large vessels to pass through, and hopefully catfish too. Open your eyes. They're open. I'm ready to catch a cat. All right, what's the plan? Talk to me. Got two kinds of bait. I got bluegill and I got some old venison. Ooh, venison it's, meat. It's really bloody. Oh. It wasn't aged well. There's too much blood in it, so it should be good catfish bait. Top secret. Yeah, you're right. There are over 4,000 species of catfish around the world, and they often live in dark and murky water. They rely on their sensitive barbels, an exceptional sense of smell, to find food. Let's hope Mark's stinky, bloody venison bait gets these Mississippi cats hungry. Boy, this, this kind of fishing brings me back to my youth, man. Yeah, you're right. It really does. I did a lot of catfishing as a young man. Feels nice to be doing this again. On the mighty Mississippi. Big catfish prefer deep water, so we're casting into the middle of the industrial canal. Sure enough, it's not long before a first bite. Did you see that? I didn't, but obviously oh you God. did. Big jerk. Reel, it, reel up the slack and see if he's still there. Nada. That was a... That was a massive hit, man. We're going to get one. They're out there. Come on, cats. It's getting dark. Don't you know you're supposed to eat at night? Well, if we stay patient, we should be able to pick one up. I believe you're right. Blue and channel catfish feed from sundown to midnight, so we're here at the right time. But it's starting to feel like I'm chasing my own tail. <laughs> I'm fishing for catfish on the mighty Mississippi. We're at a spot called the end of the world that's famous for trophy fish. Damn, not again. It was down to the to the ground. Well, I, hot dog. I picked it up and there was nothing there. Unlucky. It's not looking good, man. Been out here for a few hours. The sun set. It's got dark. We haven't started a fire. And no catch yet. A few small bites, but not that big cat that we're looking for. Oh, well, it's not a bad place to be hanging out. We're in the middle of the city right now, and we're standing in one of the, the most renowned trophy catfish spots. Dude, I love that. I love that mix of catching something wild in a city setting. It's a, the contrast. The contrast. The contrast. Between natural and man-made. Yes. Yeah. This funky thing going on. Yeah. After hours of playing catfish and mouse, it's time to call it a night. Catfishing on the Mississippi is one of the most iconic forms of fishing here, so I wanted to give it a shot. Even though catfish wasn't on my bucket list, I'm a little disappointed. But it was worth a try, and what a cool experience. Catfishing on the Mississippi in the middle of the city. Another beautiful day in the Big Easy, and I'm feeling great. Time to track down my last bucket list fish, the Bull Red. The Bull Red is basically a really big redfish. It's got to be 27 inches long to qualify. Redfish are relatives of the speckled trout, which means they prefer brackish water. Captain Dudley, the king of Lake Pontchartrain, told me I have no chance of catching a Bull Red in New Orleans City area. So I'll have to push past the city limits if I want to land this one. Today, we're headed to Venice, Louisiana. They call it the fishing capital of the world. And 
Venice is a really special place. It is one of the most amazing places to catch fish. It is the spot where the Mississippi River dumps into the Gulf of Mexico. Venice is the closest I can drive to the mouth of the mighty Mississippi. After flowing for over 2,300 miles through or past 10 states, the river pours into the Gulf of Mexico, just a few miles from here. Huge amounts of sediment are washed down the river, and it dumps at the mouth, forming a maze of islands, wetlands, and waterways called the Mississippi River Delta. To me, it's like a heart. That delta is constantly pumping fresh water and oxygen into the Gulf. And with that comes tons of fish. The sheltered waterways of the Delta are a nursery ground for a huge range of marine life. All of those little baby critters provide food for hungry predators, like bull reds. Today, I'm meeting Sean. He's one of the guides down here in Venice, and he's dialed on how to catch these bull reds. Good morning. Good. Good morning to you. Good to see you. Looking forward to taking a boat ride down river and trying to latch into some of these big redfish. Sean is originally from Charleston, South Carolina, but he's been fishing in Venice for over 25 years. He knows the Delta like the back of his hand, and he loves catching bull reds. But before we get out to bull red territory, I've got a special pit stop to make. This is the exact spot in Venice where I won the 2003 Bassmaster Classic. Of course, I was a lot quieter back then. <laughs> Man, I, a lot of emotions running through me right now. A lot of things coming back. Never give up! <laughs> if I hadn't won that event, I don't think I'd be here right now. I think my life maybe would have went in a different direction. I'm so glad we got to stop off here. I feel like my New Orleans voodoo luck has been all charged up. Now, there's just one thing left to do. Catch me a bull red. I've had to head southeast out of New Orleans to the mouth of the mighty Mississippi River to catch my last bucket list fish a redfish at least 27 inches long, also known as a bull red. I'm in the right place with the right guy, and I'm ready for the running of the bulls. Sean, we're at our first spot. Looks like just a little protected bay. What's the strategy going to be here? We're going to drift. We're going to drift out here in open water because the, the big reds just don't need structure. And more times than not, they're out here instead of next to the bank. Redfish are the largest member of the drum family so they're like the speckled trout's larger cousin. In spawning season, male redfish can gather together in huge numbers. But we're six months late for that. Today, our best bet is to look for individuals patrolling the shallow water. This system that we're using uh, is a really, really interesting system. And it's uh, a popping cork. It's got a rattle to it. It's got a cup on the top of the cork, which will trap water and splash. So we're using the sound, but we're also using that splashing noise to draw the fish in. We started out in the open, but the key to fishing is to be flexible in your thinking and keep an eye out for what's happening around you. I'm kind of watching these pelicans over here. Yeah. And I want to change the strategy. We might come back to this, but yeah. we'll while they're there, let's do it. doing it, let's move over there. Hey, one thing I know, Sean, the birds never lie. This area is full of seafood for both animals and humans. Louisiana's fishing industry is the second largest in America and provides 40% of all seafood consumed by Americans each year. But pelicans have known about the Delta seafood treats for much longer than humans. God, look at all the bait around him. Look at all the bait. Dude, the bait's blowing up all around. Oh, yeah, oh, oh. This is neat to see this scenario 
And you can see these pelicans diving like crazy here. And if you really watch, they're diving on schools of mullet that are up in the front part of this bay. And, you know, we're not fishing for mullet, but mullet are the food source, one of the food sources for bull reds. Despite the amazing show the pelicans and mullet are putting on for us, there's no signs of any bull reds yet. Eve. Uh, pop. Looks like you're popping it good to me, Mike. We just need to get it in front of one of them that's willing to bite. Yeah. Man, this is, this is a lot of work. I don't work this hard bass fishing. Woo. Man, I'm getting cooked out here in the sun and no signs of any bull reds. I'm starting to think my good luck has run out. But you know what fishing's like, just when you think it's a bust? Go it, big it, giant! Oh, oh big one, big one! Oh! Ah! Ah! Oh! It's a giant bull. It's a bull, it's a bull, it's a bull. Whoa! This is a big, angry fish. Oh my God, look at the size of this thing. Now I've just got to wear it down and land it. Light line, this is 20 pound braid, but on a bass rod, essentially. Ah, ah. He just caught a second wind. I thought I had him whipped, and he caught a second wind. Ah! Oh my God, look at the size of this bull red. I'm ready. Get us! Yeah! Yeah! Right on. Look at that. Let's get this thing measured. It's a beautiful looking redfish. But to be officially a bull red, it's got to be over 27 inches long. And here's uh, 38 inches. 38 inches! These fish are in the drum family. Look at that thing. Look at that beautiful pinkish color at the top. Look at the silver scales. Here's one of the things I love about these redfish. Look at that big, distinctive black dot at the tail. Some scientists believe that the spot is a fake eye that fools predators into attacking the wrong end of the fish. The redfish's most distinctive feature is internal. In spawning season, male redfish attract females by making a knocking or drumming sound. It's caused by vibrating a muscle in their swim bladder. And it's why this whole group of fish are known as drums. This is probably, I'm guessing, this is a three or four year old fish. So imagine what'll happen in the next 10 years with that thing. That's unbelievable. Man, this fish means a lot to me. That beautiful bull red means I've done it. I've caught all three of my New Orleans bucket fish. I'm heading back to New Orleans. A winner. Yeah, look how pretty that thing is. Look at it in the sun. Look at that. Yeah. Thank you. Go back home. Oh. Well, damn, we caught a fish. <laughs> Mission accomplished. It's time to head back to the Big Easy. And as they say around here, laissez le bon temps rouler. Let the good times roll. Man, I love this city. The people, the culture, and of course, the fishing. <laughs> I caught three out of three bucket list fish, and I've got to revisit the scene of my most important tournament win. <laughs> Time for one last wander down Bourbon Street. It's always sad to say goodbye to New Orleans, but I'll be back.